Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for dropping by again. Today is another Road to the Apocalypse, where we take a look at the development roadmap, see where we're going for the Dead Linger. We are slowly getting close to build 13, so let's hop on to uh, the deadlinger.com. Here's the roadmap. So, survivor gameplay. I mentioned build 13 because with that means we'll have maybe to update the roadmap and see what's changed. Let's come down here. So right now, we're going to talk about modifying terrain. So we talked about some difficulty settings. Now, the modifying terrain, I'm just going to gloss over because it says information withheld by order of the Department of Virus Research and Control. Uh, so that's a good way of saying, yeah, we don't have anything in place yet. <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. I mean, I can only assume at some point that means maybe you can mine, get ore and resources. Um, I got from my son and I, we picked up the two pack for the seven days to die. And so that's a very kind of Minecraftian zombie game. And my son loves the fact that it's a fully destructible world. I don't see the dead linger going to that extreme. Uh, you know, I could see maybe resource nodes at some point because there's a pickaxe. So, I mean, I could see at some point that you could maybe make a forge and some different things to where hey you're really kind of going Amish you know you're doing everything yourself making your tools and things of that nature so I, I could see some terrain modification in that sense not really that you're deforming the land the game doesn't seem to suit that but I could definitely see resource nodes and things like that in the future so we're just glossing over modifying terrain because it's only 10 percent and they don't even have anything to talk about so we'll talk about the next big thing, fishing. Okay, so here's their fishing thoughts. Fishing while requiring water locales, which later down the road we'll talk about ponds, lakes, and rivers, uh, is going to be an important activity for many survivors attempting to keep alive. Whether they're fishing in a city park, trying to trap fish from a small river in the deep woods, or throwing nets from a floating ship or massive oil rig out on the largest seas of the world. Well, that's pretty ambitious. Uh, we plan to keep fishing a skillful task where skilled fishermen will catch much larger and more rare fish and not simply a cast and roll the dice system. So that's fine. I've seen lots of role playing games that have a fishing mechanic, whether it was cast a line, roll some dice and see if you get anything to multi-tiered fishing activities like EverQuest 2, uh, World of Warcraft, you know, eventually you have to move into the dangerous PvP areas to get the rare stuff. Uh, maybe not that extreme, but but those had some pretty, pretty interesting fishing mechanics. Uh, recently I just tried the game Scion, which has fishing, you know, stand by the water, cast your lure and you try to catch something. Again, skill based. So that's cool because that does confirm at some point they're going to have a skill system. When fishing first comes in, however, I would not be surprised if we're talking just about a framework system that they did have it as just a roll the dice and see what you catch. I'm not offended by that. I'll just be more happy at some point when they get the water in, like some lakes and stuff. It says here rivers, and at some, it even mentions an ocean. You got to remember. The world that they potentially can generate, I forget what they said, like 10 square kilometers. I mean, I had to look it up. That's just off the top of my head. But that is a huge chunk of land that you potentially can, can roam through. And so I definitely see the need for some water and rivers and things like that. And fishing is just the next step that adds to that element of survival. You know, because you would think... At some point, you could find some twine and something you could use as a, a hook or a spear. I mean, you know, if you want Survivor Man, you know, even he's making spears and trying to stab fish. I mean, it's not easy, but the most basic of survival is that right there. You can make a net or something, but trapping fish, that's a basic necessity of survival right there. You got to have that. So it's on the way. Now, they could really go all crazy with this, you know, fish that gives you, you know, because it's talking about the rare fish. So, I mean, well, now let's talk about rare fish. Are you talking about how much it replenishes in terms of health, how much you can catch? Uh, you know, there's a lot there to consider. Are they going to have potentially infected fish? You know, do you have to cook it? If you eat it raw, does that replenish not so much? Do you have a chance of your infection rate going up if you eat raw fish? Uh, if you cook the fish, you know, because I, I think, 
I remember reading that that would even be potentially with like the animals you, you hunt, like the buck. You know, everything at some point will have the chance of increasing your infection unless you prepare it and make it safe in some way. Fish just seems to be a logical extension of that whole system. But the system, I call it a system, but that, that particular aspect of the game is only 10% developed. So at this point, honestly, all I could really say is that that's in the works. At this point, this is purely speculation on how it's going to go based on their description. Um, you know, will the fish have, you know, attribute bonuses? You know, hey, if I eat a bluegill, is that going to give me a run speed bonus for a little bit? You know, it's it could go that crazy because at some point, you know, you have to kind of make that decision. Is this a simulation or is this going to be kind of bordering on a traditional MMO? And the only reason I call that out is because they already have items with stats. You know, if I put on running shoes, I get a bonus. Uh, some games that are survival games, those attributes are hidden. You don't see it. But since they're calling these stats out, then that makes it more like a traditional type of online role-playing game. And so if you're going to be doing that with fish, you know, that's just another thing that you could add stat bonuses to, you know. Uh, maybe gives you regeneration. You know, if you take damage because you're nice and full, you get regenerative bonuses. And that could be from any food in, in general that you eat. But something to think about for fish. But I definitely think that fishing would be the easiest way for you to get food at some point in the future. <sighs> well, I say easiest. Easiest because you should be able to find bodies of water and at least, if nothing else, grab a stick and try to spear stuff or find something you could make like a, a makeshift net out of fishing in real life really is not easy <laughs> i've gone fishing lots of times with rod and reel and worms and different baits and lures and stuff and sometimes it's you know really easy to catch stuff other times you're out there all day and all you caught was sunburn you know so but at least it is accessible and attemptable. Now you try and compare fishing with like hunting. Hunting is is difficult, you know, tracking the animal, being quiet, they spook easy, you know. So that's why I'm thinking fishing is going to be real pivotal to survival at some point in the future when they bring it in. Uh, so it's good to see. But those are just some of the thoughts I have on fishing. Uh, thanks for checking out, you know, the column that we got going here. Uh, next, we'll be talking about general physics. You know, just looking at some things coming up, general physics, locking things and picking locks, fun toys. So just keep coming back to see what we have. Uh, we'll try to make this daily for you. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to talk about more specifically. I'd be more than happy to pull that up and take a look at it. Otherwise, thanks for dropping by. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.